To this session, we're going to speak about Network Service Orchestrator. Network Service Orchestrator is one of the key products that we have right now in Cisco, providing orchestration capabilities for physical devices and virtual devices. This product is coming from the acquisition of one company, Chilev. Chilev was a Swedish company really focused trying to solve the problem of how to provision services end-to-end -end and cover the whole network lifecycle. This is one of the classical problems, how we are able to avoid the traditional issues with inventories, with the template-based configuration, and hard-code configuration. Tylev uh, used to have two products. One of them was ConfD that provide capabilities to expose NetConf interfaces in any kind of devices. Actually, Cisco was using the, Nef the ConfD uh, OEM in one of the products, it was the NCS 6000, and right now, is exposed to the public using DevNet. The other product, it was called NCS. This product, it was the config engine that it was able to provide end-to-end -end life cycle management, providing capabilities to the upper system that allow the integration with the OSS and the BSS. One of the important things is that NCS is a multi-vendor product. It's not just focusing on one specific vendor, and it's covering the physical environment and the virtual environment which allow us to go to the BNF function, to the virtual network functions. If we look at right now what is the classical Cisco architecture, TileF is focused in the resource facing ledger. So we are providing all the resources necessary to the BSS system and the OSS system. So we take all the complexity out of the network. The idea is to provide a mediation ledger that is in between of the different domains. It's important to understand that the different domain could be the network, could be the data center, could be the access, or could be any kind of entity, physical or virtual. If we keep going and we check how these capabilities are really fitting the different problems that the service providers are having right now, we see that there are some commonalities like the red button, the magic button. This classical one that you, you have been working in operation, you know that you want to just click the button and everything is solved, all the services are configured, and everybody is happy. In reality, this never happened. You need to touch many different systems, and you need to do integrations. The other major problem, what we are doing with the templates. All the classical configurations are based in templates. If you change the service, you need to change the template. Time to market is really affected. So this is one of the major problems to really go from the marketing idea to the real production. The final problem, what is happening when you are really doing hard coding. And everybody is trying to avoid hard coding. You don't want to think about this is a specific device with this specific iOS release or this specific iOS XR. No, you try to just say, my service, try to connect two sides with some capabilities and some functionalities. Well, at the end, sometimes happen that we need to do hard coding, which really affect what is happening with the maintenance of all the different software. If we see all these functionalities and all these problems from a different angle, just thinking about what the different customers would like to have, one of the things that is popping up right now is, I would like to have services based in models. What does mean? I want to really model what I want to implement in the network with independency of the real devices. OK? Then the second thing is going to be programmability. Give access to all the DevOps guys that want to have flexibility to really interact with the network, but without know how to work with the network, with an abstraction layer that hide all the complexity and can work with devices that right now are well known, or tomorrow you have different platforms and the idea is exactly the same, same services, different platform. Last thing, multi-vendor. Nobody wants to be locked out right now with one single vendor. And especially right now that we are moving to the virtual environments, you have virtual network functions that today could be from one vendor, and tomorrow could be from 20 different vendors. So these capabilities are what all the different customers are requesting right now. Let's dig in a bit more in the model concept, because it's one of the key elements in TILEF NCS. The high level view is we have different models for different elements in the network. So in the lower layer, what we have is the device model. We don't think about a specific functionalities of the specific device. What we think is about, okay, I have a device with different slot. 
then I need to define, okay, in this slot, we'll have cards of different types, Ethernet, packet over Sonnet, one, any kind, but without go to the nitty and gritty, let's say high level specification. Next step is how I want to define my services without think in the devices where I will implement the service. So I say, okay, I need an Ethernet connection starting in point A, finishes in point B with this quality of services, and that's all. If I need to apply ACLs, I need to apply filters, that's another thing. But I don't say I need to apply the ACL thinking in this specific syntax. Next step is the domain. This service could start in the data center and could finish in the customer premises. In this case, we need to manage different domains. We need to do configuration in the CPE, we need to do configuration in the edge of the network, and we need to do configuration on the data center. When we put all together, what we are doing is an aggregation of all the different models. This simplifies a lot how we are able to modify all the different services and how we keep up to date with the changes. This is an example of how the different services could be represented, trying to go a bit more to the technology. So if we look at, at the bottom, what we have is the device model. So here, what we have is really the physical capabilities of the device, what the device is exposing up. In the second layer, we will have all the different protocols that allow me to have the different services. So if I have ACLs, I will have the definition of all these ACL. If I have layer two technologies, I will have the pseudo wire definition, but without say how this pseudo wire will be implemented. This is the key. The top layer, we have this end-to-end -end view. So the important thing is how all these models are connected each other and how we are able to say this service that is starting in point A to point B will be implemented independently of the device. And the device could be Cisco or could be any other one. So now we will see how NCS is implemented what are the main capabilities, the five major functionalities that we have in the product, and we will try to simplify it as much as possible. So NCS is very simple, let's say, it's a simple architecture. We have a service module that is taking care of all the service definition. Then we have the device manager that is taking care of all the device model. And at the bottom, we have the interface that is able to speak with all the different devices, okay? On top of, we have APIs, open APIs, plenty of them. It could be REST, NEFCOM, Python. This gives different possibilities to different customers. We are speaking customers sometimes, could be the traditional IT groups, integrating with the traditional inventory system, traditional OSS system, bill system. We are speaking about DevOps. Those guys that right now need to interact with the network very quickly and make changes using programmability. In the bottom side, we see that we have also different southbound interfaces. We could have the traditional one, CLI. Well, we will try to avoid this one as much as possible because at the end of the day, will be really related to specific CLI. We have other that is more standard, NEFCONF. NEFCON is a standard protocol that really allows you to interact with the device without any kind of parsing, okay? And the first time that we speak with the device, the device will expose the functionality that is able to accomplish. Other options, it could be via an element management system. So we don't need to really go directly to the device. We can even go to an element, an element management system. That is, is the traditional case for optical devices, where you have the optical device plus the element management system exposing a specific interface. So the first functionality that I would like to highlight is the model. The model is the key functionality inside a child life product inside NSO. The idea is that we have different models like we mentioned previously, and for each of the different models, we will need to explain exactly what we want to achieve. On the top, we have the service model that really will define the end-to-end -end functionality of the service. On the lower, we will have the device model that will give me the specific capabilities of the device. Of course, the devices will be connected, and the devices will have different topologies, so we will have also topologies model. In this way, everything that is in the network will be fully reflected in the product, and we will have a near real-time inventory. So we can integrate this system 
with assurance systems to provide information about what is really life in the network. We can integrate with inventory systems to really say this is the reality of the network. So we are doing bottom-up architecture instead of the classical uh, up-down. The next functionality is going to be the transactional. Well, for many people, this is like, uh, what is that? Transactional is the capability to really implement in small, cap in small blocks what we want to do in the network. Let's put an example. You need to provision a layer 3 VPN between three different sites. You need to go to the edge of each of the different MPs and provide the configuration. Sometimes, if you need to apply additional functionalities, you will need to go to additional nodes in the network. Let's say a simple scenario, like I need to touch the three edge node plus a couple of P nodes. What happens if in the middle, one of the nodes reboot, or you lose the connectivity, or even the command that we are sending is not accepted in the router because we are running a different software release? Well, we have a failure. In traditional systems, this is a real pain point because you need to go back to the previous status and be sure that whatever was there before to start the provisioning is still there after the failure. With the transaction, what we have is the capability to have a kind of a screenshot that once that we are moving forward, if something is wrong, we go exactly to the same status, exactly point before. Well, this sounds simple, but it's one of the key things that we can find in Chai Lev. The next functionality is the database. The database is also using Jan. It's using the Jan model language in order to model all the information that we have from the services, from the topology, and from the devices. The database is based on RAM. This is important because it gives you a lot of performance, which is another of the key points in the traditional system. How long you need in order to do the full provisioning? Here, we are speaking about seconds instead of minutes, okay? The next step is going to be the fast map mechanism. And actually, this is for me the most important functionality. Fast map mechanism is an algorithm that is able to simplify all the creation of the different action that we need to do to deploy, update, modify, or delete a service. The fast map allow me to focus in the service creation. I don't need to think, okay, what are the steps in order to update, update the service? What are the steps in order to delete the service? The fast map mechanism will generate this other action for me. This is really a simplification. If you think in terms of service creation, you are reducing at least two thirds part of the service creation. You only focus in how you create the service. You don't focus in the update, you don't focus in the delete. This is automatically done by the fast map mechanism. One of the major changes between the original product acquired by Cisco and the product that right now will be operating starting in August is the reactive map fast map. It's the option to get information coming from the network and makes actions. So imagine that you need to redeploy some configuration because something happened on the network. Or imagine that you need to wait for some event in the network in order to send some commands. We have this fast map, reactive fast map mechanism that allows you to really interact with the network. So instead of being the classical top down, pushing configuration from the, to the network, we are also able to receive feedback from the network and react. So those are the main capabilities itself that we need to be focused when we are speaking about the provisioning. In the NSO product, we have another functionality that is the event management. It's not really a full management system. We are not thinking that this is going to be the classical manager or manager of full management system that will provide assurance. But this will allow me to get information coming from the network and do correlation between the services that they have in the inventory plus the event. So if someone breaks a cable in the middle of the street, this cable will will generate some alarms. The devices that are connected to the screen of the network will generate some alarms. If those alarms reach NSO, NSO can say, OK, because this port is down, and I know that they have some customers using this cable, I can provide some information like root cause analysis. This information can go up 
to the upper layers, to the manager of managers that right now are implemented in the different customers. So this is something else that can help to improve the service Azura. Just to give an idea about the vendors that right now are supported, and this is a small snapshot. So there is a different list that is available in the Cisco website. These are some of the traditional customer, well, traditional vendors that all customer are asking us right now. In some cases, we have customers that even don't use anything Cisco device. So this is quite important in this product. It's multi-vendor and will keep going in this way. Regarding how we are able to update, well, this is one of the major problems when you are running in production. If you need to update the system, new release, because you have bugs, everybody has some kind of bugs, or you need to improve it with new functionalities, how you are able to improve it? Well, we have two layers. One is the core of the product, NSO. So this part can be updated in real time without any kind of problem. On top of, we have all the configuration and all the setup that you need to do for your specific services and could be done for the customer, could be done for a third party integrator, could be done for the technology group based in Cisco, one of the business unit. And for example, we could have one of these examples is the ball packet core. Using NSO, we are able to do the configuration of all the virtual environment in order to deploy all the LTE services in that data center in a virtual way. In this case, in order to start configuration, is the configuration of a physical device. What we are doing is configuration of a virtual device in a data center. Cisco has provided all the configuration, all the step to just integrate with the base framework of NSO and say, okay, this is the way that you need to configure. This is the way that the services should be implemented. Another example is the virtual managed services. The solution that allow to move the classical functionality that we have on the CPE, move it to the data center in a virtual environment. This is a content pack that we are able to put on top of NSO and give you the functionality to straight ahead. If tomorrow you need to work with different services, you can work directly with different system integrators that can develop all these different services in parallel and everything is integrated in runtime. So you don't need to really stop the system, wait for the maintenance windows and see what happens. Here I mentioned some other examples just to give an idea about the flexibility of the product. We have some customers that are the traditional one implementing layer two, layer three network, VPNs. Other customers that are in the other stream, it's pure data center, it's pure virtualization. Other customers are doing interconnection of data center. So the product itself is not contained in a specific environment. Give you the flexibility to really work in different environments and different domains. Wrapping up. One of the important things right now you are considering any kind of product is how this product are able to match one of the recommendations right now that is almost a standard, that is a Etsy NFV, NFV. Etsy is creating a recommendation that is the MANO, Management and Orchestration, Management and Network Orchestration, that define all the different layers in order to implement all the physical functions in a network environment. This architecture is used for all the different customers right now in RFPs. And all the different vendors are trying to match how the different products are able to fit in this architecture. In the case of NSO, one of the functionalities is the classical orchestration. It sells one of the orchestrators. So provide the cross-domain orchestration and provide the, all the orchestration and provisioning functionalities. In the other side, it's able to integrate with the element management system of all the different components and provide configuration capabilities. So it's a product that right now fit quite well in the standards that almost everybody is looking at. Closing the loop with the, one of the first slides, what we have here is how NSO can fit in a classical environment. And it's quite similar to the first slide or second slide that I mentioned. We have the possibility to configure devices directly to go via different domain controllers. The domain controller could be an element management system or could be even an SDN controller. So this gives me enough flexibility to really start with my traditional environment and move on to the virtual environment when my customer is ready to do this step. One of the latest slides is where we are right now. So I mentioned at the very beginning, Tileb 
was an acquisition coming from a different company. So until now, we have one release that is the 3.4 and one name, NCS, Network Control System. This product will be rebranded in August and will have the name NSO, Network Service Orchestrator. We'll change the release. We'll start with the release 4.0 but the first release is going to be exactly the same that the previous one with some enhancement and the different content pack that allow you to really start to work with the product. There is no chain in the binaries. So you already have the product. There is no an upgrade and chain in the binaries. It's a continuity. The last slide is the DevNet. In Cisco right now, there is a major emphasis on really open forum communities. The idea is that DevNet is the point where customer, system integrator, partners are able to go to check information and to share information. In this way, you can go there and find information about training. There are more than 30 videos explaining all the different modules and all the different components that I explained with enough level of detail to start like an introduction and finish like an expert. At the same time, you will have here people that is sharing issues that is sharing how they solve different configuration, how they create new functionalities using all the open interfaces. The idea is that you can register and share and get information. And with this, we are closing the session and I hope that it was valuable for you. Thank you.